welcome to The Journey. Today we're gonna to talk about what is an elevator pitch and why you need one. Hey, I'm Emma and today I'm joined by my co-host, Sam. And we're gonna break down, first off, what is an elevator pitch? So, an elevator pitch is a really short and sweet statement about your products, services, things that you offer that solve some type of pain point. You know, when you mentioned that, I immediately think of when we were out for some wine last night and that musician came up to our table and that's essentially what he did, right? I mean, he, he was nice, he said hello, but then he went into a quick, short and sweet elevator pitch. He did. And it's so important that you just let people know really not only what you do, but why you do it. You know, people, as Simon Sinek once said, they don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. People want to get on board with what you believe. They're, you know, interested in a really good story. And that's what the gentleman did. You know, he was able to tell us what he did and why he was doing it. And it really caused us all to be really interested in it. Totally. I think about all the chamber events that I go to just within my role at GoDaddy Social and networking events can be a balance of fun and also ugh, a little bit of a stress because <laughs> you have to be so on all the time. But the stories that stood out to me were the entrepreneurs or the business owners that really had a lot of passion and a story to what they do and why they do it. And that to me, that wasn't, I didn't even think elevator pitch. I just thought, I want to know more about you. Keep talking, which often is not the case. You're like, okay, next, you know. <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure it's just conversational, just like you're just talking to a new acquaintance or really you want to think about it this way, talking to a friend. You know, you don't try to sell or pitch a friend. You're just having everyday casual conversations. Absolutely. It also reminds me, um, my dad, I don't know if I told you, my dad uh, moved from Key West to Indiana when I was only about six months old. And one of the things he did is on the side, side hustle, he opened up a cafe. And what his story was that I think connected with a lot of people was he opened up this cafe to bring Key West to a small town in Indiana. Um, I was born in Key West. He named it Emma's Cafe. And almost every dollar went towards my college fund. And then he brought the Key West, like Cuban sandwiches, key lime pie, everything to the cafe. So he had this really cool, touching story that all started from the family that he began in Key West, Florida, and brought it up to the Northeast. And it just stuck. And it made people talk. It made them excited to be there. And that, to me, is... That's an elevator pitch. All right, Sam, so obviously elevator pitch, we're talking about face-to-face, -face, uh, word to mouth, but where else could I go and essentially pitch what I'm all about or why I'm doing what I'm doing? Cool question. So you can actually put it on your business card, really quick, short, to the point statement that you can just hand to people. Also, you can put it on your website. You know, these are areas where people see you and you wanna make sure, because we know people's attention spans are decreasing. So. We want to make sure that we get to the point as quick as possible so that they know enough about you to become interested in you and know more. Yeah. And social media, right? Of course. I know I see on a lot of Twitter handles, they have that little bio right there as well as on Instagram and Facebook. And it's a great way for you as a small business owner to sell what you're about with telling a story. Short and sweet. All right. So I got a pretty good idea. Not to put you on the spot, but I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> Let's do an elevator pitch right now. Why not? All right, so Sam, what do you do? Who are you? Why do you do it? So I'm a military spouse. That's most important. That's who I am. You know, my wife, she is the center of all that I do. You'll hear more about that. But what I do is I speak oftentimes to those that are just really frustrated, you know, with the current job situation. I teach people how to turn from going to, for job security to career security. Because job security, that's an oxymoronic statement. We know. There's no such thing. It depends on so many things outside your control. The economy, the company, you know, the location. But career security, it's all about what you do. How well do you give your elevator pitch? Tell people about your personal brand, who you are, things that, you know, make you unique and stand out. And also, more importantly, how well do you build your connections, your network? Emma. You've heard of the statement, it's not what you know, but it's who you know, right? Absolutely. I have too, but it's another addition to that. It's not what you know, or even who you know, but who knows you? 
That is a lot of great information. I'm jazzed on what you do, why you do it, but for the sake of an elevator pitch, I challenge you to put that in one to two sentences. Challenge accepted. So I'm Sam Pilar Jr., military spouse who speaks on how to create career security opposed to job security. All right, so now you wanna know how to find your target audience. Now, totally. rather than just looking at the demographic, you know, who these people are, their age, where they're located, I like to do psychographic. What's psychographic? Good thing you asked. So Seth Godin, I heard him say, thinking about what people believe, what is their thoughts? So going back to me and what I do, I'm talking about career security rather than job security. Mm -hmm. So I will be talking to people who are frustrated with the inefficiencies of today's job search. They're tired of just applying into the black hole of applications and just waiting for somebody to possibly reach back out to them. So it's a mindset. So I suggest look for those that are believing what you believe. I believe people should take control over their job security, really the career security, and they can do things that are gonna set them up for future success. So you wanna look for those people that believe like you, psychographic rather than demographic. All right, Sam, so thinking about what you do is making me really excited. And I just gotta bring up one thing I'm super passionate about is my webinars. Mm. And a lot of people do webinars. You're like, yeah, cool, Emma. I <laughs> listen to webinars all the time. People do them all over the world. But I really try to like differentiate my webinars with this whole model of laugh and learn because mm. I think it's more fun to learn things if you can laugh along the way. And that's perfect because that's what makes you different from everybody else and sets you apart. Are that's you saying you know. that I'm unique? I'm saying that. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> All right, Sam. So another thing I think about, just staying on topic with webinars, is uh, my boss stresses this a lot. Like, what is your CTA? Call to action. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you have to say about that when it comes to bringing your elevator pitch to the table or getting people excited about what you do? What's the hook? Well, that's important because people don't know what to do until you tell them, right? So if you're interested, let's set up a coffee date or let's call me at this number. Or for instance, you know, if you want to find out more, go here. Tell them what you want to do so you can take it to the next step. If you don't say anything, they don't know what to do. Oh, okay. Now that you break it down that way, I guess there's one thing that I do in the webinars is as I'm, people are laughing and learning, sometimes they're getting so much information that they might be getting overwhelmed. So I really encourage them by, I guess, understanding them like, hey, this was a ton of information, all these social media tips. Here's a link to have a social media consultation. Right. Well, that, exactly. Is that like a good call to action? That's a perfect call to okay. action. All right, Sam, you've given us a ton of great tips about elevator pitches, how to approach them, but what's kind of the final best practice, the bow on top of this present? So you wanna make sure that your elevator pitch is between about 150 to 200 words, and you wanna be able to deliver it in about one to two minutes, because remember, that short attention span. All right, that's a wrap. You learned what an elevator pitch is and why you need one. So be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell so you're not the last to know when the next video comes out. And make sure you comment below. Let us know what is your elevator pitch. Don't be shy. This is the journey. See you later.